Welcome back friends to, what are we, saw milling on the river today. So we've got the first project I worked up last night that we're gonna do. I've got my cut sheet that we're gonna get started on today. And I think you're really gonna enjoy it. It's something that you'll be able to kind of downsize and do yourself uh, that will be a great addition uh, to any home. A very, very nice gift for your, for your special lady. So uh, we're gonna start by uh, sharpening. We've gotta sharpen the sawmill. Was, I noticed it was dragging pretty hard. It was putting a pretty good load on the engine yesterday. So a lot of folks on the live stream asked if I could share that process with you. It's very simple and it's quite interesting. It's interesting actually. So we'll do that here first thing and then we'll get started on our cut sheet. So let me show you the tools involved and then we'll uh, get to the sharpening. Everything you need to sharpen your Lucas mill is right here in this box. It's just essentially this grinder. And there's a little truing stone here. This, the design of this, the more I'm around it, the more I work with it. It's just so much like, just, it's no, there's no coincidence that it comes from Australia. You know, it just mimics what they're like. You know, that individualism and that ruggedism and the simplicity to be able to take something and work on it yourself, serve it, service yourself without requiring anything else. This to me is a huge, one of the huge advantages of a Lucas mill over a bandsaw mill because you can service it yourself, not sending things out. Now, bandsaw mills have their place. I'm not saying one's better than the other, they're just different. But this is a great feature for me because I can sharpen this in three minutes and be back working uh, without relying upon anyone else uh, to get me going. This here's the sharpening grinder with the jig all preset from the factory so you don't have to fool around with it. And it's 12 volt, so you don't need an exterior power source. You can just clamp it onto the battery that you use for starting uh, the mill. So you do need to dress these stones from time to time. Uh, this little stone comes in a kit. I've only had to do it one time, uh, and it's very simple. All you, simple, you do is basically hold that on there with your thumb uh, 90 degrees against the body there and turn this right there. Just, that's just going to kind of true that edge up right there. Keep going until you see the black, basically the black gone. That's it. We're ready to do it. You got one wing nut here that'll take the safety cover off. And you see this bracket right here? This is made, uh, that's your sharpening jig bracket right there. So we got a little wing nut on there. We just drop that in. Make sure you turn your teeth there so that the grinding blade falls in one of the gullets there and lock it down. Now this comes preset from the factory. Uh, if you ever need to adjust it, it's simple to do. We don't need to get into that because I, I know that it's right. We'll double check it real quick. But that's basically it right there. Now we only have, what do we have, five teeth on here? So it goes really quickly. So let's hook this up to the battery. Positive first and your negative. Okay, we're ready to go. Now these teeth are tungsten carbide. Tungsten carbide is known as one of the toughest elements in the world. It is very hard, typically used for saw blades and such. It's almost impossible to melt. Even diamond cutters <clears throat> have a hard time dealing with uh, tungsten carbide. So it, it holds the edge real good. If you don't hit nails or uh, any metal in your wood, uh, then you don't have to sharpen it very often. Well, with the fur anyway. Just I can cut for a couple days without sharpening. Okay, so what we're going to do here is just put, bring that tooth down, and you can probably see just to make sure we're in alignment, which we are. I mean, it was perfectly aligned from the factory. It's touching all the way across there. And we're going to back that off. We're going to start a wheel, and we're just going to work, just dress it back and forth until we get a, a sharp point on the end that's just sticky, sticky cat claw sharp. Keep it moving. Let's back it out of the way. Bring your next tooth in. How simple is this? I mean, even an East Coast guy could do this.
and we are done. Let me give you a close-up look at the tungsten. Here's a little better perspective on how that bracket works. But that's it. It's all just pre-done. It just fits right into the bracket that holds the cover on. And here's our teeth. Sorry about this lighting, guys. It's murderous. But you can see there, that that's just sticky, sticky sharp. You can see where we ground. We didn't come into full contact, but that's not a big deal, as long as we got that first section there. But if we flip these teeth around, you'll see that they're all very sharp. How long does that take a guy? Two minutes? Maybe five minutes with the setup? And we are done and ready to go with a super sharp saw blade. All right, friends. So we're going to get to work on our cut sheet. I was going to put this, I was going to attach this to the, the cutting video uh, of the next project. I'm going to make this all by itself uh, and then we'll start fresh with the other one. Um, and I'll do it in a way, I'll give you dimensions and stuff so you can follow along if you want to do this yourself. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Uh, but we'll cut the material first and then after that, uh, before I start working on it, we're going to build us an outdoor carpenter's bench out of a giant slab of fur, uh, uh, the old school way, like they used to do 200 years ago. Because I hate to, I don't want to go back in the shop when it's so nice down here with this beautiful spring weather. I've been cooped up in the house with the snow and the cold for so long that let, we'll set ourselves up a little shop down here so we can do our projects down here by the water, which is much nicer. So uh, we'll do our cuts and then we'll build that, that deck, that table together. So I think you'll find that pretty interesting. So that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. May God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers and uh, stay tuned uh, for part two here uh, where we'll uh, start a project. So we'll see you guys on the next video. I think I'll stop this morning. Pretty amazing to see those elk. They are enormous. I hope no one else comes the other way. They are huge.